Hey friends, it's Gabe Kolstad with Westside Community Church. I wanna thank you for joining us for Church Online and for welcoming us into your space. We're excited to be in this series called Better Life. And I'm hoping that today's episode will help you reach the breakthroughs that you need in your life. Now listen, we're gonna do three things today. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna explore. We're gonna explore the barriers that you might be facing in your life that are keeping you from your better life. And we're gonna explore the breakthroughs that you want, the pathway to those breakthroughs. Um, and we're excited to do that today. Together. Second thing that we're going to do is we're going to reflect through a little bit of music and some prayer. And so I hope you stick around for that part of our service because I think it's going to be super meaningful for you. And third thing we're going to do is we're going to act. We're going to take some really important actions, the things that you feel like are going to make a difference for you. And in order to do that, I want you to grab your phone right now because we're going to be using our phones to take action. Here's how you do it. You take your phone and you text the word hello to 503-905-9067. Again, text the word hello to 503-905-9067 and we're gonna send you a link that'll give you some uh, tips, some show notes, and some opportunities to really get connected and take a next step that makes a difference for your life. So with all of that said, I can't wait to jump into this with you. Here we go. Good morning, welcome everyone to Church Online. I'm Tim Wooten, student director here at Westside Community Church. I'm gonna share with you a couple of tips today on how you can have a successful service today. So, like Gabe mentioned just a second ago, text HELLO, H-E-L-L-O, to the number 503-905-9067. Just text HELLO, do that right now, because we're gonna share with you some tips, we're gonna share with you our show notes, we're also gonna share with you some opportunities to connect. So go ahead and do that right now, because that's gonna be part of the service today. Number two, one of these great opportunities coming up is a getting started online workshop. If you're new to the faith, new to Christianity, and you're like, hey, what's next? What do I do now? This workshop is for you. So get signed up in that text right now. It's coming up Sunday, September the 20th at 3.30 p.m. It'll be an online workshop, but get registered right now. And again, you'll do that in the link that you're being sent uh, in that text. Third thing is we wanna give you an opportunity to uh, invest financially uh, in the kingdom of God in Westside that's doing so much for the community. As you know, we do so much for the people around us, uh, to our missionaries around the world. And so we, we wanna give you the opportunity. So inside that text, you're gonna um, be able to activate your generosity. So go ahead and do that right now. And then speaking of making a difference, last Sunday, we did our annual Good Neighbor Project. It was phenomenal. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of you joined in with multiple churches in the area to go serve our community. And so, hey, if you were part of that this last week, Thank you. Hopefully next year, all of you can be involved. But hey, let's check this out and see what we did last week.
More than any season in recent history, COVID has elevated our individual need to redefine, reinvent, and improve our lives. How's that going for you? Our list is never ending, I feel like. No matter who you are or where you're coming from, we all need to find our better lives. So join us at Westside for this four-week series and find your better life. Well, thanks for joining us for this brand new series called Better Life. We're kicking it off today with a uh, focus on find your better life. Uh, this is a season of time of our lives where uh, we've all faced deeper questions for sure about who am I? Where am I going? How am I going to get there? And all of these different things. Some of us are facing confusion uncertainty, uh, fear, and even fatigue, like just like wearing out. You know, if you're a, a parent right now, you're wearing out. If you're a, a boss right now, you might be wearing out. If you're an employee, you're probably wearing out. All of us are kind of at that place where we need more energy. We, we need to get back and kind of reconnect with where we're headed. And my question for you as we get started with this series is what does the path of your life look like? What does it look like? Now, you might look at this picture that I just put up and you might go like, well, I wish it looked like that. That looks nice. It looks calm. It looks fancy. It looks clean. It looks straight. It looks simple. Um, but if I were to describe the path of my life, it might look a little more like that. That might be where you're feeling right now. And uh, the, the, we're talking about the better life. All of us have a better life. I'm convinced that God, the creator of the universe, is also the creator of you and of me. And he designed for us an ideal life. And maybe... Like me, you've taken some kind of twisty paths in your life and you might feel like you're not living your better life. You might feel like you're living your blocked life. Like I can't, I don't know where I'm going. Reminds me of a time when I was in college, I was delivering a glass. That was my job. I was uh, the rookie, so I got the worst hours. I was delivering glass in the middle of the night to the Oregon coast and it was rainy and I didn't know where I was going. And I pulled over to a gas station to ask the person who was working there, uh, like, how do I get to this place I'm going? And he said these words that you might have heard before, you might have thought before. He said these words, you can't get there from here. <laughs> That's the worst thing you want to hear in the middle of the night on the Oregon coast when it's raining. But it's also the worst thing you want to hear in your life right now in 2020. It's the worst thing you could think about like, well, I, I know a place, I can imagine a place I want to go. I, I, maybe I used to be at a place that I want to be. Maybe you'd call that your better life, but maybe this is what you're thinking. I can't get there from here. And most of us have believed that lie from time to time. I want to give you a different approach, a better approach, I think, that will help get you to where you're going. And that is this. How can you reignite your better life? Because I'm convinced that God has one for you, a better life. Now, I'm talking to people from all walks of life. I realize that some of you are watching on Facebook. Some of you are watching on YouTube. Some of you are watching at church online. Um, and, and some of you might be picking it up somewhere else. But the truth is all of us are at different places. Some of you might be going like, I don't know, better life. My life's going really, really well right now. Uh, but that's not everybody. And, and so everybody has a better life. This is the question that will get us moving again. And this series is going to teach us exactly how to do that. Now, real quick time out. I want to talk to you a little bit about next week. Next week, we're going to be talking about kicking loneliness to the curb. That's the, the, the thing that we want to take care of and tackle next week. Do you have that sense of loneliness? Like you just wish that you had a better connection with your family or your spouse, or maybe you feel like you wish you had a better connection with your kids, or maybe you just feel like you had, you wish you had more friends, more support, uh, kind of a, a crew. And we're going to be talking about how do we get to the place where we have that feeling of fullness in life and community and fun and support, and we can kick loneliness to the curb. That's next week. But today, we're focusing in on finding your better life. How do you find it? I want to give you a little uh, background of the passage from the Bible that we're going to look at today from John chapter 4 in the New Testament of the Bible. John, the Gospel of John, is this intimate beautiful walk with Jesus through his life and ministry on earth. And in John chapter four, we encounter Jesus in very much his, his humanity, the, the, the side of Jesus that was the, the humanity where we know he felt feelings, he dealt with emotions, he tackled temptations. 
He even experienced things like hunger and thirst. And he was in John chapter four in this place. He was very thirsty. He had gone on this long journey and he was walking and he, he decided to take kind of the long way, sort of the, the detour. And he went through the town of Samaria. That was sort of like no man's land. It was like the wrong side of the tracks. It was like you wouldn't go through there if you didn't have to. And he chose to go through Samaria. Um, and, and he was very, very thirsty and he sat down at a well. And I want to bring you into the account right there. It says in John chapter four, verse seven, it says, soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water. And Jesus said to her, please give me a drink. Now, uh, I want to make sure that you know that Jesus was a Jewish man. Um, not only that, he was a Jewish teacher. So he's a very important person in the, in the Jewish culture. And Samaria was, uh, again, the wrong side of the tracks. It was very much, um, a, 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 a looking down upon place. Uh, the Samaritans were called dogs by the Jews. They were mistreated. They were absolutely persecuted and, and shoved away. And so Jesus decides to go to this place that most people would never go to. And he, and he sits down at a well. And up pops this lady who is a Samaritan woman, which, uh, you know, those two don't go together. A Jewish important person and a Samaritan woman, um, she kind of was like the lowest of the low on the social ladder. And so she walks up and, uh, and, and he says to her, please give me a drink. Let's move on. She said to Jesus, you're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? That was a good question because she was probably like, sir, I don't think you know where you are and who you're talking to. And she also knew a few things about herself. Remember that kind of crazy path I showed you? She'd been on that path. She had definitely taken some detours in her life. She had definitely wandered off of her better life many times. She knew it. And as it turns out, Jesus knew it. But I love Jesus. And I love that he loves us no matter where we're coming from. That did not stop Jesus from it purposely going to her place, sitting down at the well that she was going to come take a, uh, get water from and, and asking her for a drink. It just blew, uh, he broke all the rules actually in this. And you're going to see his love in this account from John chapter four. And you're going to see a few other things. Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift God has for you, your better life and who you're speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. Now, this lady was going to get regular water, right? She didn't even, never heard of living water. And Jesus is saying, well, you know, I know you're here for water, but let me introduce something to you that's different. Let me introduce to you living water. She said, but sir, you're talking about getting water and you don't have a rope or a bucket. And she says, and this well is very deep. You're in no position is what she was saying to give me a drink. Uh, uh, you're, you're asking me for a drink. And she said, where would you get this living water? I mean, she's full of questions, right? She's curious. She, uh, she's she, Jesus had her attention because he came to her place and sat down and was asking her for drink. And he wasn't judging her and he wasn't belittling her and he wasn't ostracizing her. And he wasn't making her feel bad. And he wasn't shaming her. He was instead, he was engaging her and she knew something was up. And she was asking a lot of questions. And so I want to, I want to point out the, 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 the big takeaway that I have for you today, which is this. When God gets your attention, ask him your question. When God gets your attention, that's the time to ask him your question. And listen, this is a time in life where God might be getting your attention. God might have got your attention through pain. God might have got your attention through disappointment. God might have got your attention through some kind of special provision that showed up and you didn't expect it. God might have got your attention through somebody paying attention to you and offering to talk with you or help you. God might have got your attention in some way. Maybe God hasn't got your attention yet, but I want to plant a seed for you right now to be on the lookout. God is coming to you, just like he came to this woman who had a past, who had a history, who, who really, you know, she was so far off of God's path. She thought, I can't get there from here. I could never get to my better life. I've made too many mistakes. I, I don't know the way and times have changed. And how am I supposed to do that? You know, some of us look back and we go, well, if it was 10 years earlier, I could get to my better life. I probably was on my better life 10 years ago. You might say, well, if this hadn't happened or if I hadn't have done that, I could probably get to my better life. And many times we place ourselves in a, in a place that even God doesn't place us. The truth is, is that that straight, easy, calm, beautiful path we looked at, that doesn't exist in anybody's life. It really doesn't. 
And, and so sometimes when we see ourselves on this crooked path, we think, I can't get there from here. But here's the, here's the cool thing. Jesus, he comes to where you are on the path. He's inviting you uh, by getting your attention to ask him your question. So what's your question? I want to introduce you to somebody named Emily, who's been on a wonderful journey to Jesus. God's been reaching out to her, and I want her to share her story with you. And then we're going to have a little time of reflection through a song, and I hope that you'll engage in that song. And then don't go away. Don't leave. Don't click the X. Don't don't go away. I want you to stick with me because I'm going to come back, and we're going to talk about what are we supposed to do with this information. We'll see you in just a few minutes. When I got baptized, ever since then, just like everything has been so different. Like I still wear this every day. I got baptized and blessed in this. And it reminds me of the marriage that took place that day. And it was so crazy because like it meant so much to me. I was like, this is our day. I was like, this is me and Jesus right now. And it was crazy because like the days leading up to it, I had found this my mom gave me when I was a kid and this my parents gave me uh, when I was a kid. And I haven't, um, they don't live out here and we haven't been too close on a while so it's like really like awesome that I found this and I was like cool I'm about to get baptized and I was like I just kept saying to my friend um I feel like I'm about to get married like I'm so excited I feel like I'm about to get married like this is like my one true love like this is everlasting like this is not an earthly type of you know thing where it could anything bad could happen I'm like this is like this is it. This is my one true love. And so I kept talking about that. I told my mom, I called my grandma. I told my one friend that um, came with me to the baptism. I was like, I feel like I'm about to get married. Like he's going to be my husband and my best friend. And it's so exciting. So when I walked in um, and even like I had the whole idea to get this bless, this ring um, before I came in, just to always remind me that I'm the beautiful bride. And so when I came in and the Holy Spirit had laid it on your heart to like bring that like specific point up I was so over like come with emotions but like in a good way but I just felt the Holy Spirit like right there with me because he had been laying that on my heart and my mind for days and so when I walked in and you were like today you're about to be basically married you're gonna be the bride of Christ and I would just was like how is he like right there thinking the same thing I was ever since that day obviously he's been already working in my life before that but ever since that day it has been like such an intimate relationship i would say like ever since ever since that you guys baptized me um it's just like it's so it's just such more profound like i can see it and i can spot it out and i can like notice all the time and be like oh hey like you know i see you working in my life again oh uh, hey i see you answering that prayer you know what I mean? As humans, we all start like walking around, like whether you have like $10 million in the bank and you have like 40 cars and you're set up for the rest of your life and never had to work again, or you're poor and you have like debt or you have nothing. Either way, we're all kind of walking around as humans, like something's missing in me. And I don't know what it is. I just want people to see like what you guys saw in me as far as the enthusiasm and the, like the joy, like that's, you can only get that from Jesus. And so I really like, obviously it's so, so meaningful for me to have this in my heart, but now that I have this in my heart and I know I want more people to be reached by this because like that's the only way that you're gonna like, you know, feel this complete and feel this like constant joy um, in your heart is by having Jesus. So. search the world but it couldn't fill me man's empty praise treasures the fade but never enough then you came along and put me back together Here in your love Oh, there's nothing better than you There's nothing better than you Oh, there's nothing Nothing is better than you To show you 
Isn't that fantastic? I love watching what God does in all of our lives, no matter where we're coming from, uh, no matter what we've gone through. He knows how to reach out to us and he knows how to bring us into a place where he gets our attention and we can ask him our question. And you know what? God wants you to ask him your question. He wants to engage with you where you are on your path. Uh, you're not as far away as you think from your better life. You're not as far away as you think from reigniting your better life, from getting on the path that leads you to the life that God has planned for you, a life of fulfillment and abundance and joy and, and contentment, a life of answered prayers, a life of impact, of knowing that your life makes a difference, that you have meaning and significance in this world, a life where you know you're not alone because you have God's spirit in you and you can feel his presence with you and you can even share that with other people. That's the life that God has for us. We're gonna be talking in the series about how to get there, but today my main ask of you is this, would you pay attention to what God is doing in your life? How's he getting your attention? Maybe it is through your pain again, maybe it's through... Um, your questions uh, uh, about how is this all going to work out. Maybe it's through a loss of some kind. Maybe it's through a gain of some kind. But God is reaching out. He's getting your attention. And so when God gets your attention, ask him your question. That's the key to getting back on the path that God has for you for a better life. Now, Jesus replied to this woman, you know, what is this? She says, like, what is this water? What in the world? And he says this, he goes, anyone who drinks this water, he's pointing to the well, like the, the water that you're here to get, will thirst again soon. He'll become thirsty again. But he said this, he said, but those who drink the water I give, he's talking about a, a whole different thing. He's introducing a concept. He goes, those who drink the water that I give, living water, will never be thirsty again. He's describing what I'm calling the better life. He's describing what he would call eternal life. He's saying it becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. I love his language. He's going like, you came here thirsty, lady. I came here thirsty. But he, he goes, here's the thing. There's a better life than that. There's something that won't actually go away. Like if you take a drink of this living water that Jesus is talking about, he's going, it's never going to leave you thirsty in that way. Again, you're going to be pursuing things that are higher and better and more fulfilling than anything you can imagine. And he calls it a, a spring, a bubbling spring. What is that? It's like, it doesn't stop. It just keeps going and it gives you eternal life. And I love this lady's response. She goes like this. She goes, well, for crying out loud, what are you waiting for? Give me this water. She's like, I, I, we're done talking. Like you just made this, the presentation I'm buying. Yes, I want, I want the water you're talking about. This story goes on 
And it's an amazing story because Jesus starts digging in a little bit to her personal life. He says, go get your husband. And she goes, well, I'll be honest with you. I don't have a husband. He says, you're right. And he goes and tells her about her life. And she had had so many failed relationships. And we know she felt shameful about that, like any of us do when we have a failed relationship or we've caused harm to somebody or we've, again, taken a detour off of the path that we were on. Some of some of you might might have grown up in a place where and in a time and in a situation where you you really were aimed at what you would have called your better life and something happened someone happened and and it bumped you off track in your mind and you've been kind of counting yourself out like you sort of got eliminated from the race and jesus is sitting at your well and he's going i beg to differ because you're not that far away from getting back on to your better life she said give me this water he he explains to her, her that he's the messiah she, she said to Jesus, she goes, hey, sometime the Messiah is going to come back and he's going to help us. And, and he said, I am the Messiah. And she believed him at that moment. And she takes off and she runs back to the village that she came from. Mind you, she is the outcast of this village. She is not somebody that people look up to. She had a horrible reputation. She had caused all sorts of collateral damage in relationships and really was not respected because she had gone through so many men in that town. And she comes back to them and she goes, come and see. She goes, come and see. I love that. She goes, come and see the one who told me everything I ever did. And he still loves me. And as the story moves on, what we see is that this whole town puts their faith in Jesus. This whole town is like turned upside down because they're going, what could it really be that somebody would come and see us and put us back on path for our better life? I mean, again, here's this picture. Where do you see yourself in that picture? Maybe you see yourself, maybe worse than being on the windy road is maybe you're like, well, no, I veered off that road and I, and I went down a cliff and I you know, had this major collision and my life is in ruins. You might be feeling that way today. You might be feeling like God couldn't possibly love me. I, I've done so many bad things. You might be feeling like, well, I had these high expectations of myself and I let myself down and I don't know how to forgive myself. You might be thinking, you know, I've, I've broken trust with some people and um, they're not going to, they're not going to believe me, if I say I'm turning my life around, uh, you got to look at this lady who said, come and see. And they came and saw when God does something in your life, when, when your better life starts clicking, people notice and they want that. It doesn't matter what your past is. God is so full of forgiveness and grace for you that, that he has a fresh start for all of us. It's time for a fresh start. I want to talk to you about how you do that. I want to give you something this uh, this week as we kick off this series called The Better Life Challenge. And here's what it is. The Better Life Challenge is this. I want to ask you to go on a journey with me for the next 30 days. I want to ask you to, to go, okay, I'm going to have 30 days of encouragement. How are we going to get that? We're going to send that right to your phone, okay? We're going to send you an encouraging message every day with some of God's words that encourage you right to your phone. That's part of the Better Life Challenge for the next 30 days. The second part of that is I want to ask you to connect to something we're calling a watch party. What is a watch party? Well, let me explain it to you. A watch party is this. is basically uh, doing church online together. It's saying, well, you know, we've been watching church online. Maybe this is your first time you're joining us for church online or you're watching on YouTube or Facebook or somewhere else and you're going, but I'm by myself. Well, a watch party is going like, I'm going to do this with other people. Now I know it's COVID and we want to be honest uh, or uh, honest and we want to be faithful. We want to be careful. We want to treat people well. We do not want to be dangerous or unsafe. Um, and so here's what a watch party is. A watch party is this. You're getting together to watch church online with people that you've already been gathering with during COVID. Some of you have family members and you've been hanging out for birthday parties or uh, you've been doing activities maybe with your your kids, friends, families, and, and regularly kind of being with these people. Why not say, hey, we've already been around each other. Let's get together on a Sunday morning. Come over to my place. We'll turn the TV on and we'll do this thing called church online. That's what a watch party is. And that's a part of the Better Life Challenge is connect to a watch party. We'll give you some information on how to do that. Here's the third part is this is spiritual growth coaching. Now, this lady from John chapter four, she didn't know where she was supposed to go. She didn't know how to get there. She believed the lie that often you and I believe, which is you can't get there from here. And that could not be further from the truth. God has a better life for you. Some of you watching right now, you are the future 
uh, of, of God's plan. Did you know that? God has a special calling for you in mind. Some of you are going to start organizations. Some of you are going to help uh, kids in poverty. Some of you are going to be the next church planter that Westside Community Church sends out into the world somewhere. Some of you are going to lead your kids in knowing who Jesus is. And there's so many ways that we can make an impact. And God has that for you. What is your next step in getting on that path? We want to help you do that. One of our team members is going to reach out to you if you take this challenge and they're going to help you individually find out what is my next step. And, and then here's the fourth challenge piece is this, is then take that next step. Take your bold next step. Listen, this Better Life series, this is the time for change. It's time for a fresh start. Let's, let's stop putting off what God has in mind for us and let's get going on this thing. Let's be animals about it. Let's be aggressive about going after that better life that God has for us and don't let anybody talk you out of it. The, the Samaritan woman from John chapter four could have easily said, I can't go back to that town and tell those people they all hate me. They think I'm the worst. And yet she didn't. She went back there and she said, you got to come and see this one who, who, who loves me and he'll love you too. And that's where God is right now. He is right here with you. Now, listen, if you want to take that better life challenge, here's what I want you to do. I want you to text the word better to this phone number 503 905-9067. Text the word better to this phone number 503-905-9067. And what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to send you those daily encouragements. We're going to, we're going to help you know what a watch party is and how you can connect to a watch party. We're going to reach out to you and invite you to a spiritual coaching session where you can actually one on one with one of our team members, get some help on where you're going in your life. And then we're going to help you move toward that next bold step. You don't want to be, and I don't want to be in the same place a year, five years, 10 years from now as we are right now. There's something better out there for us. It's your better life. Let's go get it. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm inspired when I watched this lady from John chapter four, like so many people have uh, over the years, say to Jesus, okay, I'm ready. Okay. Okay, I think I know what you're talking about, this eternal life. Okay, give me this water. I, I'm so thrilled to watch people make this decision every week at Westside Community Church. I'm so thrilled to know people who are saying, I just said yes to Jesus. I just invited Jesus into my life and I want him to forgive me just like he forgave that lady in John chapter four. And I believe that if he did it for her, he can do it for me. And maybe that's where you're at today is you're saying, all right, I see that God loves me. I see that God has been reaching out to me. And in fact, he sat down in my well recently and he, he reminded me that he loves me and that he forgives me. You know what? I'm going to receive that gift. Get, Jesus, give me that water. If that's where you're at today, I'd love to lead you in a time of prayer. Um, and just before we do that, I want to ask you if you would do this. If you are at that place right now where you're saying, I, I want that. I want that life. That's the beginning to the better life. Hey, listen, that's getting back on the path if you've never been on the path before. You're saying, yes to Jesus, give me this water. I want what you have, Jesus. And I hope that today you'll take him up on his offer. You could just say that, that, that to him right now. I, I, Jesus, give me that water. And let us know by texting the word Jesus to 503-905-9067. We're going to send you some stuff. No matter where you live, we're going to send you some stuff in the mail to help you grow in your faith. But here's what I want to do. I want to lead all of us in a time of prayer. Because every one of us has probably been knocked off the path at one point or another. So would you bow your heads wherever you're at with us? Thanks so much for inviting us into your space, whether it be in your car or on your couch or in your backyard, wherever you're at. If you're by yourself, you're with a group, would you guys bow your heads with me right now? And would you ask God to help you right now? God, we thank you for designing for us a better life. We ask that this would be the beginning of something brand new. God, relieve us of our fears. God, help us to doubt our doubts and to believe you instead. God, help us to surround ourselves with people that support this new move in our lives, this better life. I pray that you give us the courage and the wisdom to know where you're leading us and to trust you as we take these next steps. God, I pray for anyone who's watching right now who said today, yeah, I need the water. God, give me that water. Maybe that's you right where you're at, I want to lead you in this prayer. Jesus, forgive me. Thank you for coming to my town, to my path, to my well, for sitting down and having a conversation with me, for hearing my question, for knowing my past, and for loving me anyway. I believe today. 
I receive your eternal life. And I thank you for dying on the cross to pay for my sins and give me that life. Jesus, help me to find my better life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to ask you if you'd join me today along with the Westside Band as we just reflect on God's goodness. Let this song sink deep into your soul. Thanks for being with us today.
what helps me best is to remember that God is waiting with his arms open wide to embrace me and to take me in and hold me in his grace. And I know that that's the same for each and every one of us, each and every one of us watching and listening. And so with that, let's sing it out. Here I stand, I surrender and need you now. Hold my heart now and forever, my soul cries out. Here I stand, I surrender. everyone. It's been really fun to connect with you today. Thank you so much for inviting us into your space. We really do appreciate that. Hey, if you're not already following us on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, make sure you go ahead and do that now. That way you'll be in the know. You'll know what's going on at all times. And so go ahead and do that. Also, Westside has an app. Go into your Play Store, look for the Westside app, download that. And uh, that way, you again, you'll know what's going on at all times here at Westside. Uh, we want to invite you to come back for episode two of Better Life, which is how to kick loneliness to the curb. Man, it's going to be a great, great uh, episode. You're not going to want to miss that. And please feel free to invite someone, invite some family members, invite some friends, but let's get people invited to this great, great episode next week. And then before we go, parents and kids, we've got something just for you. So stick around. Hi, my name is Stacy Allen and I am the Kids Ministry Director here at Westside Community Church. There's four things I wanna tell you about today. The first one is, if you visit our Kids Ministry website, you will find on-demand content for you to use with your family at home whenever you choose. There's content for preschool children, content through for kindergarten through third grade, and there's also preteen content for fourth and fifth graders, or we call them Club 45. This is updated weekly, so each week there's a new lesson for you to do at home with your children. And then lastly, if you haven't already done so, please join our Kids Ministry Facebook group. It's Westside Community Church Kids, and there we're posting information about each week's lesson, pictures of activities that are going on, information about events that we'll be holding, and we'll just have some messages from volunteers, and it'll be a, another way to just stay connected with all of us there in kids' ministry. So I hope you have a good week, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Good morning, Westside students. Coming to you from our Westside Students Cafe. Hey, it's lesson time, so go to westsidecommunitychurch.com forward slash students for today's lesson. Go check it out.